You know, so in America, a lot of us are behind. Uh, and I could go on and on, but you see what happened in Russia with the war. Yeah. What did everybody do? They wouldn't put their money into cryptocurrency because the banks. Yeah. And that's going on, I think, now in China. The banks are strong arming all of uh, the consumers and not even letting them withdraw their money now. So, uh, yeah, Sri Lanka. It, yeah. You just saw Peace family, Will Roundtree here on the Full-Time CEO Podcast, the shit they don't tell you where I interview influential individuals, entrepreneurs, businessmen, businesswomen, moguls, legends, and everything in between. And today we got a very special guest. Y'all always say, Will, you say all your guests are special, but trust me, this guest is special. He's, you know, not only a good friend of mine, but first let me get y'all a story, you know, so I remember, you know, a few years a few years ago, I'm out and about hanging out with a, a good friend of mine, and someone said, "Yo, I got to introduce you to this this guy named Corey." And I was like, "All right, man, you know, whatever." And so he was like, "No, trust me, you're gonna want to meet this guy. You know, he's you know well traveled. He you know started off in network marketing. He you know has several businesses. He's big in crypto and trading and this and that and that and that." I'm like, "Everybody tell me that." And so you know, he proceeds to introduce me to Corey. And once I met Corey, I swear, it was like we've been knowing each other forever. You know what I'm saying? Literally, like, it, it, it's just like, I often say energy attracts energy, which energy is really just power. And I think it was two powerful individuals being able to come together and speak the same dialect. And I think that's what really just drew us together. And ever since then, we've just been locked in. And, and his brother has done nothing but rolled out the red carpet for me anywhere he's at or anywhere that I'm at. And if he's not physically there, this man literally picks up the phone, make a call, and the helicopter comes and pick me up. This man, <laughs> that just goes to show you how connected this man is. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I definitely want to introduce to some. I know a lot of you are, uh, already are very familiar with this individual, but I want to introduce to you guys my good friend, Corey Williams. What's going on, man? Crypto Corey, as, as, as they, they, they've now you know, giving him the moniker of. What's going on, man? Man, life's good, man. How about yourself? Oh, man, I'm blessed and living the dream, man. And I, I appreciate uh, the, 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 the humble um, introduction, man. And, and like, you, like you said, from the day we, we were introduced to each other, and your name preceded you before I met you. And it's just an a interesting uh, way of how, like you said, energies connect. Uh, I've always wanted to meet you. But I'm not one of them people to be reaching out to people on social media. Right. But uh, it's def- definitely once you get to a certain point in life and you've made an impact on enough people, then you're like two, three, de- two, th- two to three degrees of separation. So it's been one of those situations where, man, some people connect to us, man. And like you said, we've been uh, been rocking ever since. And uh, I-, I appreciate you for being you. And it's a privilege, pleasure, and honor uh, being here on the podcast. Oh, man. No, the, the, the pleasure is all mine, man. And, and you know, just just from... You know, and and one of the things I often say about people, like it's a lot of people who pretend to be somebody. And it's nothing wrong with that. You know, in some instances, they say fake it till you make it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But one thing, like you've always been 100% authentic. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to liken your journey or not liking, but I'm going to say that I think a lot of who Corey has become and still becoming came from personal development, you know, and I know we're going to get into a little bit of your story, but, you know, just knowing that you worked on who you are and that's what helped you to become uh, 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 the person who is uh, likable. You know, I often say people have to know, like, and trust you to even want to do business with you, let alone wanting to be in the circle with you or let alone wanting to be in a room with you. So who, who is Corey Williams? Let's get into that. And then we'll talk more about, you know, who, who you've become. Man, that's this song out there called Rags the Riches. <laughs> and uh, I, I would say that's, that's who I am. Come from a, a very humble beginnings, man. Single parent household. My mom raised me, my brother. My mom never made over $35,000 a year. And that's probably with, 10 hours a week of overtime. Uh, I watched my grandmother and my great-grandmother uh, clean homes. They were maids. 
Um, and uh, I would sit on a couch and watch them cleaning uh, the rich people houses. And so uh, it was just that's 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 my background. I'm from Houston, Texas, uh, one of the areas known as Fifth War. Um, I grew up with a dad that was around, but he didn't know how to be a father. Uh, who was Crypto Corey? <laughs> We being honest and transparent, I, I come from a, a lineage of non finishers where, mm. where people will start a business or start an idea and they wouldn't finish it. I come from a lineage uh, where every man in my family on my dad's side, including my dad, my little brothers, cousins, uh, have been in prison. Uh, my great grandfather was in prison 38 years. I met him one time on his deathbed for two hours and learned more about myself. So I was one of the people. But I grew up uh, in the church. And my mom always um, just exposed me to uh, successful uh, individuals. So it was one of those situations where you see what's happening to everybody in the hood, but you got a choice whether you're going to be a product of your environment or you're going to do better. And so uh, my mom uh, was trying to pay for my brother to go to college. Uh, I was 13 years old, so he was 17. He was going to Xavier University, so she had a back surge. I had to get a hardship license at 13. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to get a hardship license, meaning that they allowed me to drive and they allowed me to get a part-time job. I had three jobs in high school. <laughs> wow. Class president, football, basketball, baseball, uh, you know, the, the several organizations, student council, on and on and on. But I'm just one of the people, man, I, I just I always wanted better because uh, I've been rich, I've been poor, and rich is better. You know, so but then when you talk about personal development, it's one of the situations where, you know, I always was told that, you know, reading will get you, you know, open to ideas and and, and situations that most people, if they say, if you want to hide something, you hide it in a book. And so personal development, I started, I got into network marketing at 21 years old. And, uh, you know, it was one of the situations where I saw Men that was sharp, had, you know, had tailored custom clothes, had the house, had the wife, had the kids. And they was, you know, working in my mind two, three, four hours a day, a couple of conference calls, a couple of meetings and living a lifestyle, making six and seven figures. And I'm like, if I could just touch six figures, if I could just touch the hem of the garment, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> just give me the crumb of six figures. I'm like, I know what I can do with that, man. And so it's just one of the situations where I got into sales because I was supposed to be a theater major. Uh, well, I was a theater major in college, but my family took that dream away from me. Mm. Uh, they would say, you know, I got cast in a couple of movies. I got cast in Barbershop 2. I got cast in, I forgot the name of the movie, Spike Lee. He uh, had a, a military movie. Uh, and so I got cast in uh, Friday Night Lights. And so I was kind of making money while I was in college doing the theater thing. But then my mom and family was like, if you drop out of school to go do Barbershop 2, you're not going to go back to school to get your degree. I'm like, it'll be filmed for six, eight weeks. I can go back to school next semester. So it was one of the, one of the situations where I said, that's the last time I'm going to let somebody take a dream away from me. Mm. And so I got into sales. My mom always said, you got to give the gab, got into sales. And uh, started making six figures right away. Because I was like, you know, it was commission only sales. Knocking on doors, door to door. Walking holes in my shoes. I probably knocked on every door in Texas, the Southeast region, <laughs> door to door, selling office supplies, selling merchant services. And so, uh, you know, hit six figures, commission only. And I was like, wow, you know, this is pretty cool to touch this kind of money. But on the flip side, I didn't have no financial literacy. I was making $2,500, $2,700, $3,000 a week. <laughs> but I, I would live. I would go to the club Thursday, Friday, Saturday and blow the money <laughs> <Spend all up. laughs> and live on three to five hundred dollars throughout the week because I was used to not having no money. So I'm like, I can get me some hot pockets, some cereal, some oatmeal, some mini made fruit punch and, and survive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so and, and, and that's when network marketing and financial literacy came into some place where I was like, I'm making money, but I don't know how to save money. I'm making money. I don't know how to invest money. So just getting around the right people and mentors, man, that's that's what brought me to where I am today. Uh, seeing people that I've always surrounded myself around people like you that, that, that was smarter than me, wiser than me, older than me, you know, uh, have uh, done certain things that I want to do. And I've listened to other people's mistakes. And so that's 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 who I am. That's who Corey Williams is. Now it's Crypto Corey, you know. Now, and before we get into Crypto Corey, I, I actually want to touch on a little bit about, you know, the direct sales and network marketing, because that's where my journey in entrepreneurship started at. And I can remember growing up in Milwaukee, I was told by the age of 21, I'd be dead or in jail. 
You know, we we idolized the D-boys, the pimps, the gangs, and anybody who was getting money had girls, had cars, jewelry. Back then, it was pagers. <laughs> you know, we didn't really have cell phones back in, in my day in middle school and high school. And so getting into network marketing, like you mentioned, the images, this is why images is important to, to the youth. And this is why they get in, enamored with the rappers and all of that. Like we was attracted to a, a particular lifestyle. But when I got into network marketing, the lifestyle of seeing young black men in tailored suits, making, like you say, six figures a month, you know, driving nice cars, but they were professional. And it was like, man, if I can get this lifestyle and live like this, that was attractive to me. And so, but the personal development is really, as I often say, what saved my life. But what I want to touch on, Corey, there's a negative stigma around network marketing at times. You know, we used to always get this all the time. Oh, you're doing them pyramid schemes. And I used to have to check people real quick. I'm like, your job is a pyramid. You're at the bottom. And so, <laughs> so how, what do you say to those who kind of, who not kind of, who have that stigma of network marketing, because I tell people that with anything, you just have to extract out of it and make it beneficial for you in your journey. What would you say to those individuals who who have that mindset about uh, network marketing? Well, been in the industry 17 years, man. Network marketing has changed my life and has saved my life. Um, I wanted freedom and I wanted the lifestyle. So I'm one of those people who you know, I always got into the industry and said, I'm not going to be working hard forever. See, a lot of people, you know, they think that working hard is going to get you rich, but working hard is overrated. <laughs> you Real know, talk. It, it, it's, it's, it's not just overrated, <clears throat> but it's it's one of those deals where J. Paul Getty, one of the first documented millionaires, said, I'd rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my efforts. So if me, you, and 10 of our friends can go put in 20 hours a week, that's 200 hours versus me, 40 hours, 60, 80. I don't got 80 hours. I don't got no, no time for my kids. I don't got no time for my family. I don't have no social life. So it's just one of those situations where I always believed in residual income. If you do something once and you get paid for it over and over and over again, that's what I believed in. And I also believe in never depending on what sorts of income. So network marketing for me, uh, if I didn't make any money all these years in which I, I, I've made Plenty of money, uh, several commas in my bank account to change my zip code a couple of times. But if I didn't make any money in the industry, like you said, the personal development, reading uh, Rich Rich Dad, Poor Dad years ago, reading, uh, you know, how to win and influence people years ago, influential, influential friends, reading uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, just just personal development. It, it just. I forgot. It. I think with Jim Rohn, he said, I can tell you how much you make within a couple thousand dollars by how many books you've read, Mm. you know, because a lot of people, they don't work on themselves. He said, most people go work hard on a job, but they don't want to work on themselves. So network marketing has always been good to me. You know, it's two kinds of people in the world, somebody buying and somebody selling. Period. It's a product or a service. So, you know, which side you want to be on? I've always wanted to be on the selling side because, you know, if if I'm all the one that's always buying, like most people in our community, we got the highest, uh, you know, spending, out of any community, but we got the lowest circulation amongst, uh, you know, circulating our dollars. So never marketing, it, it just, it changed my mind, changed uh, the way that I think, help with, help with uh, public speaking, personal development, help with uh, working with others, help with patience, help with leadership, help with uh, finance, uh, managing money. It just helped me. And then, then also networking, your network should reveal your network. The people who are in your circle should Reveal. If you hang around four broke people, you're going to be the fifth broke one. You definitely will. If you hang around four rich people, you're going to be the fifth, fifth rich one. Like, you know, when they say it's lonely at the top, it really is. Like, sometimes, I'm, I, you know, I've been working from home. Like, most people just got to work from home two years ago. I've been working from home for myself for 16 plus years. And it's like, and during the middle of the day, I'm like, you know, who want to go to the mall? I know. Who want to go to the movie? Looking for somebody to, to call. Mall? I'm like, yeah. signing my son <laughs> you know, out of school. Hey, let's go do something. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know so it's just one of those deals where network marketing has really just changed my life. And then the relationships, man, like, you know, like you said, it, let's let's say I was in a, in a company and and then that something happens with that company. I go to another company that 
it's really like a, 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 a country club where, okay, I know you did well over here. Let me bring you over here and you can be the VP of sales. Let me bring you over here. You can be the master distributor. We get deals over here, <laughs> you know, so and it's big business. You want to bring your product or service to the consumer and you're getting rid of TV ads and, 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 and endorsements and influencers. It's, it's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, you know, and some products work. Some of them don't. <laughs> but listen, if you I like uh, Gillette deodorant, that's a product. I always will use Gillette deodorant. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So Gillette got me on auto ship every month <laughs> because I like Gillette deodorant. I like Heinz ketchup. Right. You know, <laughs> so I'm, Heinz got me on auto ship. I'm always going to use Heinz ketchup. It's just one of those deals where when you like a product or service, you're attached to it and you're going to create residual income for somebody or for yourself. No, absolutely. Real talk, man. And that's what I used to always tell people. It's like, like we, we get caught up in, in saying little cute sayings. Oh, that's a pyramid scheme and this and that. Like we don't even really know the definition of what a, of what those terms are. We just hear. And so, and then not only that, I'm like, okay, you may feel that way about this organization that I'm a part of, but I see the results of what it's done for people in our communities and getting them out the hood. You know, ex-felons, D-boys, like people who have literally changed their life just because they, 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 they immerse themselves around a community of individuals who want to see other people win. You know what I'm saying? On a the block, they didn't want to see me winning. <laughs> like you creating the ops just because you're being successful. And so, like, and, and, and so, and I think because people just always are, are, are prejudging because of the lack of information or knowledge that they have about a particular product or service or about an industry, they do themselves a disservice. But if they just picked up books, they would see that person that, that network marketing is some of the, 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 the gateways to really jump starting you being a much more successful entrepreneur. Because they teach you the, the basic skill set. So you can join it even if you don't make any money, but you just follow the principles and concepts that they teach. Almost everybody who I knew who was in network marketing and took it seriously, who have other business ventures, are successful in their own right. Period. And, and here's the thing. A lot of times people get in to make money. But sometimes people need to get in it to become a better person. That's that's. That I got part. into the industry because I needed a tax write off. I was working, making six figures, commission only, but I didn't pay my taxes because mm. I thought the money was just going to keep coming. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I needed a tax write off. I got into the industry because, you know, it was one of those situations where I knew that I needed to work on public speaking and sales skills, and I also believed in betting on myself. Real talk. See, a lot of times, you know, people will go work 40 hours a week on, on their job, but then they'll, they'll, they they'll want to put one hour on Saturday in on their business and wonder why their business, you know, listen, I, I know and I kept my job, but then when I got my first $10,000 bonus, I don't think I should have quit, but I quit <laughs> <laughs> because I said, look, look, I'm making this company millions and they're not even giving me one, one or 2%, if that makes any sense. So it's been a blessing, man. And uh, I always tell people, what you want to do? Work your way to the to the middle because corporate mm -hmm. America has a glass ceiling, you mm -hmm. know. So the timing, and then also who you're working with, you know. That's I, I've always had some of the greats in the industry, uh, like the Holton Bugs, like the David and uh, like the Helen Della who says, uh, like the Manuel Bernstein. These, these were some people that they were they were great in the industry, and uh, just working with the right people that always. I was I was I've just been blessed to work with the right people. But also I told a lot of people no because they couldn't show me that they were consistent or going to be successful. Mm. And that's another deal in the industry. A lot of people get with their friend and their family, but how can I show you how to make six figures if I've never made six figures? That part. No, no, real talk, man. And 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 again, the personal development, like I always often say, if you want training at a discount. Join network marketing. <laughs> like real talk, man. Like it, the best training. And of course, it's going to depend on the company, the organization you join, who you're upline and all of that. But let's fast forward a little bit. Crypto Corey. Like, man, like it's, it's, 
I've been to different parts of the country, the world, and your name is popping up everywhere, man. Like you really trailblazing and and, and, and making a mark for yourself, man. And 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 I've been kind of privy to kind of see a, some of it manifest. I know a lot of it you have you had already had established, but it's, it's, it's definitely been like a proud moment because, you know, we're in the inner circle with each other. And so when you see your people that you rock with winning, like you get excited, you get inspired. And so how did you transition from network marketing uh, going into the financial space? Like how did that transition happen? Well, a good friend of mine, um, and I, you know, this probably be my last time bringing his name up, but it goes back to who you're associated with. A good friend of mine, David uh, Emilitier, uh, he got involved with a company uh, that brought the awareness of Forex, which is foreign exchange and cryptocurrency to the masses. And so when he got in, he told me, he was like, man, you know, this is what we're going to do. Uh, but I'm like, dude, I don't want to go back to school and learn charts and 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 moving averages. I, when I look at a chart, my head start hurting. I was like, so no, I don't want to do that. He said, well, man, we're just going to recruit. And I was like, uh, I, I, I want to learn how to trade. Six, six weeks later, <laughs> you know, he was at a hundred grand. Six months later, he was at, or six weeks later, a hundred grand a month. Six months later, 250 a month. A year and a half later, 500 a month. Two years later, a million a month. And I'm like, what just happened? Mm. This is my guy <laughs> that we came up in the industry, rags the riches. And I'm like, what just happened? Like, dude, are you kidding me? And so just to see, like you said, somebody that's in your close circle have major success. And I was like, dude, do you even know how to trade? And he was like, no, I don't know how to trade. Because <laughs> wow. the company wasn't focusing on trading. Uh, you know, that was kind of the MO, but it wasn't focused on the trading. So at that point, I was like, man, I got to start learning this trading stuff. I'm like, it can't be that hard. And so I started seek, seeking after mentors. Like you say, never marketing is the is the personal development on discount. It seeking really after is. mentors who's going to cost you, you know, $10,000 to sit down with them. Who's going to cost you $5,000 to sit down with them for for a couple of hours for a weekend to learn or to pick their brain or come to these sessions. I paid, I paid 10 grand, I, I believe maybe 15 years ago for Carnegie sales training. And it wasn't nothing different than what I was learning network marketing for free on super Saturdays. Yeah. You know, so when I saw him just go to that next level, I took an interest in it. And then, uh, you know, the Forex, I was making money every day on that side, uh, learning, uh, trading, but then crypto, it was more of a long term. Uh, and that that kind of just took my interest. And I started investing in, in courses. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, Michelle Lilly uh, Hester, she um, you know went to the uh, what is what's the name of it? Uh, a school in Greece, and she's one of the only Black females that uh, has a blockchain uh, 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 degree. And so I went to that and, and learned from her, and just start going to seminars, all these conferences, and and just doing you know where I was learning from, learning on my own, personal development. And, uh, you know, it just went to another level, man. I, I was a part, I've been part of two bull runs. Well, that means where the crypto market is 10 x overnight. <laughs> and so I, I just was, I've been blessed, man, to be able to understand cryptocurrency. And now I teach cryptocurrency. I teach people how to, uh, you know, when to get in and when to get out, when to stay away. And uh, I'm just, I'm, it's steady ongoing. It's, it's CE, continuing education. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a blessing, man. Uh, crypto has saved my life. Crypto has changed my life. And, uh, and then it's even more one of those deals that you talk about being able to close that wealth gap. I'm seeing where people are becoming accidental six and seven figure income earners on accident just because they got into a certain crypto at a certain time. You know, and it's not a get rich quick scheme, you know, but who wants to get rich slow? Mm. <laughs> you know, nothing wrong with getting rich slow, you know. And yeah. these days with crypto, it may be five, 10 years. You know, back in the day with investing in financial literacy, they didn't want us to learn about cryptocurrency, mm. which is now they didn't want us to learn about forex. Though. They didn't want us to learn about stocks or, or or life insurance policies or real estate like like you teach or or Airbnb. They didn't want us to have this personal development. But now we got in it and the sky's the limit. No, absolutely, man. And so let's back up a little bit. You talked about you've been a part of two bull runs. Uh, break that down for someone who is new to just the, the dialogue that's involved in, in, in trading? Uh, 2017, 2013, 
uh, that's when the crypto market uh, usually skyrockets. You'll see a 10x on um, last month, 12 years ago, last month, I forgot what exact day, the Bitcoin was at one cent 12 years ago. So you see Bitcoin go from one cent to $300 to $900 to $9,000. 2020, Bitcoin was at $9,000. 2020, Ethereum was at $300. Bitcoin went all the way up to $67,000. Ether went all the way up to $4,300. And, you know, it's so every four years, you'll see what's called a bull run. That's where a lot of the cryptos will just they skyrocket. You know, and if you're in position, uh, you know, one of my phrases is buy low, sell high. If you're in position to buy in times like this where we're in a bear market, which means that the prices are down and everybody's scared and most people's portfolios are down. Uh, this is, you know, is this a time to load up? There's a philosophy said when there's blood in the streets, that's when you buy. Mm. When people are scared, that's when you buy. When people are greedy, that's when you sell. Right. You know, so, uh now, how can someone educate themselves to make sure that they're walking into a scenario when to buy low? Like, how do you know when low is low enough for, you know, someone who may not have the risk tolerance to start investing? Put it like this. You'll never see a $3,000 Bitcoin again. I predict, <laughs> mark today, mark today's date and time. I predict that's today, 7-27-2022. 232 Central Standard Time, that Bitcoin one day will be $100,000. Mm. So if two years ago it was at $9,000, $8,000, one day in the next, I would say, five to eight years, Bitcoin be at $100,000, just do the math. You know, and how do you know which ones to get in or when to buy low uh, or when to get in? It's it's about educating yourself. You know, uh, you know, I teach courses, but I always tell people I'd rather pay you to teach me about credit and real estate than to go bump my head and lose money. Then still got to come back and pay you again. <laughs> that is true. Do it right or do it twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so it's one of those situations where get with somebody who, who's educated in this. I've been in this space for a little over six years now. Uh, and it's, and it's, 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 it gets to a point to where I'm an industry expert now because I've been in six years and crypto's only been around 13 years. So I've been in half of the time that crypto has been around. What if you were in, in real estate or what if you were in the credit industry right when credit cards first came out or six years after credit cards came out, teaching people about credit or financial literacy? It's like I, I have a head start and then I've educated myself. There's something called Web 3.0. Uh, you know, we know the Internet as the World Wide Web and the websites sit on the Internet. So cryptocurrencies sit on the blockchain. The blockchain uh will be the future of what we have i went or i didn't go we went to the super bowl and what did you get it in your email it was a nft okay so you got an nft that said mr will roucher you were at the super bowl yeah so they knew who you were they knew where you were sitting they have your name e email address it was at sofi stadium so that nft one day will be worth something because that was the first super bowl that had NFT. nfts absolutely Absolutely. So we knew back in the day when we was collecting our baseball cards, our upper deck and our tops, you know, <laughs> our, 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 our clear cards. We knew that those cards one day would be worth something. If you still got some, go pull them out. Yeah. So it's just one of those situations where if you hold on to your cryptos for a lifetime, for a generation, you know, you'll make money on it. You know, and so it's just about finding the right ones and the utility and knowing when to get in, when to get out, when to stay away. And also knowing which, which ones are scams. We've seen so many of them crash lately. You know, we've seen a lot of these exchanges crash and it's like, unfortunately, people are getting beat up because they're trying to learn it on their own. Mm. Our grandmothers and great grandmothers uh, and grandfathers, they didn't choose to learn about the Internet. And so they were limited as to where they could go in corporate America because, you know, Miss Miss Fisher, that's my great grandmother name. <laughs> uh, she didn't know how to use the Internet. Mm. My grandmother still used pen and paper. My grandmother just started texting. so. The cryptocurrency, uh, the blockchain, Web 3.0, NFTs is here to stay with or without us. That's what's happening. Your bank didn't ask you for permission about Zelle. Everybody got cash out, like PayPal, said, Venmo. It's, it's just digital currency. Yeah. You go to Asia right now, you're using a QR code and they're wearing masks. They've been doing that for seven years. Mm. You know, So in America, a lot of us are behind. Uh, and I could go on and on, but you see what happened in Russia with the war. Yeah. What did everybody do? They wouldn't put their 
money into cryptocurrency because the banks. Yeah, and that's going on, I think, now in China. The banks are strong-arming all of uh, the consumers and not even letting them withdraw their money now. So right. yeah, Sri Lanka, it, yeah, you just saw what happened yeah, there. It's a lot going on, man. And so, so speaking of that, so let's say you have a particular coin and it is valued at ten thousand dollars. In order to 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 buy into that coin, do I have to buy one coin at ten thousand, or can I buy into a percentage of that ten thousand? But someone, because a person may say, "Look, I don't have ten thousand dollars." You know, so what what does that process look like for someone who's let's say Bitcoin was at ten thousand, which right now it's at roughly a little bit over twenty thousand. So you would get one tenth of it if you put a thousand dollars. Okay, you get one tenth of one whole coin. And so the goal is Bitcoin is only twenty one million Bitcoins ever going to be made. Twenty one million. Right now it's about nineteen million, uh, a little bit over nineteen million that are already purchased out there in somebody's wallet or some some banks or some big corporations have purchased it. And so once Bitcoin gets to uh, 21 million, then it's kind of like a Ferrari Enzo. You want this Ferrari Enzo? You're going to pay what I want you to pay for. And I'm going to tax you on it. It's kind of like that that Mercedes Goldwing. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a rarity. And so we're going to become our own banks. And so if I own five Bitcoins and you want to go buy some real estate <laughs> with crypto, that's what's happening now mm -hmm. in the metaverse and or you can show your crypto portfolio and go to a bank and buy real estate because they say, OK, that crypto is just like cash. I know you can put that in, into a bank account. So more, some people got more crypto than they have cash these days. So you can you can go use that crypto uh, to finance real estate. And, you know, a lot of banks are liking and a lot of companies, you know, you can go buy a Lamborghini or Rolls Royce with crypto. Yeah, no, absolutely. Definitely. So the moniker Crypto Corey, where did that come from? You know, as you started elevating in this space, you, you're you're being sought after to come and speak a, a, around the world. Uh, um, and I, I'm pretty sure a part of it is branding, awareness. How has that helped you from a branding standpoint? Because I know that there's not a lot of black people in this space. As much as it looks like on social media, even though people see like five people pages, they think it's everybody. <laughs> it's like, like, how has that helped you from a branding standpoint, especially in our communities? Well, first off, I always say I'm not one of the Internet guys. And that's how I mean you. We, 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 we connect. I'm like, he's not just one of the social media guys. <laughs> people can pull up on me. <laughs> you can see me. I can touch, feel, touch. Right, you know, right, right. I, I'm a belly to belly kind of person. So Definitely. I'm not just one of the Internet guys, you know, traveling around the world taking pictures on somebody's jet or taking pictures with celebrities or in cars or showing off jewelry and money and, and fake stuff. And I, I'm, I'm a real person. Real talk. And, 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 and as you mentioned about me being known, I've done a lot of stuff in the entertainment industry um, and network marketing. I helped a lot, helped a lot of people. I, I used to own a bar. I used to promote, you know, so just, just grinding. I've helped a lot of people. So I said, I want to kind of be like Diddy, you know, he started off as pub daddy. Then he went to Diddy, then he went to Brother Love, then he went to Sean Combs. You know, I, I had to rebrand myself because I used to be known as the coffee guy. Mm. You know, I used to be in a coffee company. I never drank coffee, but coffee helped me change my zip code. <laughs> right. I used to be in a travel company, but, you know, travel helped me. So I had to rebrand myself. And I said, I want to be known as Crypto Corey. And I, I believe this is my, my final run. Uh, you know, I'll be 40 in September, about 45. Uh, God willing, in this next bull run, I'll be done. <laughs> and so it's just one of those situations to where I said I want to brand myself and I want people to know uh, know me for being in the cryptocurrency industry. When people think of Will Roundtree, they think about credit and real estate. When right. people think about Diddy, they think about music. When people think about Odell Beckham, they think about football. You know, when people think about Michael Jordan, they think about you know basketball. When people think about cryptocurrency, I want them to think about cryptocurrency. No, that's what's up, man. No, and no, and and I love that, man, because I think that you know the the beautiful thing about being human is that you can create your own narrative if you're willing to put the work in to create that. Because unfortunately, a lot of times our loved ones they remember who we used to be. They remember Will Roundtree from sleeping in a the car. They remember Will Roundtree from dropping out of college. They remember Will Roundtree from being whatever perception they had. And so, yeah, I had to create my own narrative. And now 
I'm able to do that. And like you mentioned, change my zip codes and do all of these cool things, meet people like yourself, travel the world and, and really just live in life, man. Like people. And I'm sure you get this, too. I've had people say, well, man, slow down. You working too hard. I'm like, I ain't, this not work to me. Like <laughs> I'm having fun, like being able to interview people like yourself and travel and do all of this dope stuff, man. And so like looking back, Corey, coming from where you come from, the fifth ward of Houston, Texas, could you have ever imagined being here? Me, I was that guy. I was That's the black sheep of my family. I always thought highly of myself. Uh, I've always been uh, overconfident. Uh, because I grew up watching my pastor, you know, one of my pastors, he was associated with Bishop, uh, in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. So I grew up around Bishop Paul Morton. I grew up around Bishop Jakes when he was in West Virginia in the storefront church. I saw Jakes. I met Jakes in 1992. Oh, wow. He was in a storefront church, a storefront, <laughs> probably 400 oh, members. Wow. But I, I grew up, you know, watching, you know, Clarence McClendon and, and, and people can talk about you know, church or whatever, but, you know, it was either that or, or be outside busting people up, upside the head, mm -hmm. either, either church or, or you know, or, or sports. And, you know, I'm 5'8", five 5'8 eight, uh, five eight and a half, maybe 5'9 with, with my uh, Alexander McQueen's on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I wasn't jumping out the gym. Right. I had friends that was, you know, I didn't like, you know, I didn't like being hit in football and baseball. I didn't. You know, I didn't like <laughs> I'm in Texas. It's, they hit you hard out here, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, and football is it's the heat. It's just so I knew I wasn't going to be athlete at a certain point. But it was like one of those situations where it was like, you know, what do you want to do? Do you, do you want to make something of yourself or, or not? And are you willing to put the work in? That and that's part. one thing, man, you know, that, that we have in common, man, is, is putting the work in. And I admire you, man. You, 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 you're man. disciplined. You make a lot of sacrifices. Um, you know, you enjoy life. I enjoy life, but 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 your discipline and consistency—that's the key. You know, I, I always wanted to better myself, and I've helped a lot of other people build their dreams. But I said I want to focus and help and build my dream and help other people get what they want out of life. Real that's tough. one of my favorite quotes. You help enough people get what they want out of life, you get what you want out of life. And so I've had to focus on myself, be disciplined, uh, build my brand, uh, but then, then also just just to see people, you know. Go from a thousand dollars in that bank account to ten thousand. You know that powerful. that's a beautiful thing. You know, that's powerful. I, I, I believe most people's lives can change once they hit ten thousand. Easy. Once they hit fifty thousand, it's it's levels. Ten thousand, you got a little cushion. Fifty thousand, you know, you you you're getting there. Hundred thousand, you know. So being able to help people, uh, you know, make significant money in, in the crypto space in just a very short period of time, it's a beautiful thing. No, real talk, man. So where can people find you? How can they follow you uh, and all that good stuff, man? So uh, I have a website, uh, CryptoCorey.co. That's C-R-Y-P-T-O-C-O-R-E-Y.co. Uh, or hashtag CryptoCorey anywhere on Instagram, the, at the Crypto Corey. Uh, and, and you can find me. I'm everywhere like American Express, man. You know, I, I might be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I might be here today, here in Houston today, might be uh, in, in, in London tomorrow. Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm at a point to where I'm willing to do whatever it takes uh, because I want my kids and my kids' kids to reap the benefits of the work that I'm putting in today. And uh, it, it's not just me. I'm not a self-made nothing. I've had people that have poured in my life, people like you, uh, reading your books, coming to your seminars. Uh, you know, I, I've had people that have, have uh, a, a praying mother and grandmother. Uh, I, I've had people that, that that have believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Real talk. You know, see, a lot of times they look at people like myself and yourself, and it, it get hard sometimes. You know, yeah. the, the dog gonna keep barking, traffic gonna be crazy, kids gonna be kids. You know, family gonna be family, and, and they see us in, in whatever light. But it's kind of one of the situations to where you know, uh, I, I just I, I've always wanted more for myself. You know, so, uh, you know, it's 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 nothing like seeing the progress, you know, seeing where you started from and then also setting goals. I mean, no person ever achieves success without having goals set. But then a goal is a goal is only a goal if you don't put action to it. Real you talk. Know? 
No, that, really that simple, man. And so, Corey, man, we definitely appreciate you taking time. I know you probably got the jet warming up, be getting ready to go hop somewhere in jet set, man. And, and I, you know, and I definitely just love your story. I love, you know, just your drive and what you've done for a lot of people and just really being instrumental in, in bringing the, 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 the message of understanding, hey, we have to participate in this or else we're going to be like our grandparents who didn't want to jump on the internet and whatnot. So, man, so, Corey, we appreciate you. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in to this episode of the Full-Time CEO Podcast. The shit they don't tell you, I get to interview some of the dopest people. That's why I say this is not like, this is not work to me. I get to interview dope individuals like my good friend, Corey. Uh, I get to build friendships all around the world. But more importantly, I get to deliver this information to y'all. So make sure you like, share, comment, and continue to spread the word. And until then, I'll see you at the top. Peace.